Welcome everyone to another Rocket Dollar educational webinar. Um, I'm here with John Green today, uh, founder and CEO of NADA. Uh, we are both some Texas-based companies, so uh, if you're one of our Texas uh, clients, uh, you're going to love this one today. Um, and always, why do we do these webinars experience uh, experiences? Uh, Rocket Dollar, you know, we provide retirement accounts in self-directed IRAs and solo 401ks. So these are IRAs that can invest in alternative assets. Real estate is one of the most common um, and desired alternative assets that our customers are looking for. So I really wanted to have John on today to talk about um, his company and um, you know what they can really do at NADA. Um, we're going to have him present on uh, on NADA and also some of his uh, what they're working on for this year. John, how about uh, you introduce yourself and kind of some of your background? Yeah, happy to do it. Very happy to be here, Brendan. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity. Uh, you know, a lot of alignment, being Texas-based, sharing that, and just generally the, the the thesis that you know people deserve to have more control and access to their money uh, and wealth creation. Uh, but yeah, so I'm John, co-founder and CEO of NADA. Um, you know, a bit about me. I've, I've come to accept that I'm really best described in, in two parts. In my, uh, in my early 20s, I had the opportunity to start a punk rock band with a couple of friends, and we ended up getting signed. And four years later, I had a little mini career touring and recording two albums you know, as a punk rocker. Uh, so it created this really community-centric you know, experience for me, um, a bit of a nonconformist, you can imagine, that came out of that. And then I landed in financial services. And so you know, a decade plus later, I'm in mortgage industry, uh, doing risk process control into where I eventually became a strategy and innovation, mainly for independent mortgage companies. So I've got kind of this duality, these two different voices are always competing, this really, you know, regulatory, structure-driven financial guy with this non-conformist punk rocker. Um, yeah, I think it's what gave me a lot of insight and opportunity to really go uh, go after and do what we're doing here at NADA. Uh, so, so NADA is a, a wealth tech platform. Um, we, we are singularly focused on providing more access and liquidity to the home equity market, a very specific subset of the single family residential real estate market. Um, so we have a couple of core products that, that allow for, for both retail investors as well as homeowners to participate and build wealth through uh, home equity. Great. And um, just so everyone knows, you know, Rocket Dollar, as I said before, we provide the, uh, the IRAs, but we do not provide investments. So a common request of our clients, you know, some people, they come to Rocket Dollar, they already know a real estate deal that they want to invest in. Maybe they have a really tight network um, that even suggests deals to them because they've done deals with other people for, the, uh, for a long time. So they'll come and they'll open their Rocket Dollar account. They'll enter an investment right away. We have many people that come to us. They have that desire, uh, maybe the assets, um, the desire to learn about those certain real estate investments, but they don't have the network. A lot of the alternative side, um, you know, has relied on these really close networks of knowing about deals. So a lot of our clients ask us, hey, how can I access more real estate investments? How can I get more exposure? Um, how can I maybe access something? I'm in the Midwest, how do I invest in the South? I'm in, uh, I'm in Texas, how do I invest in Florida? Um, mm -hmm. And even some of those experienced investors will come to us. Sometimes that network dries up. Sometimes they'll be a little bit tapped out or they frankly don't have the time to do the research um, in another state or another experience. So part of these education webinars is, hey, let's provide this education and more of this access, you know, this path to access that John, John's gonna talk about today. That's perfect. All right, now I'm going, we got your uh, slides here. We'll get in them one second. Okay. We good, Brendan? Yep, we're good. We can see everything. Go. Okay. okay, so so not in this, our, our, we're very much a purpose-driven company, um, to Brendan's point around creating access and making 
what is you know the largest asset class that that you know literally has an impact on everyone's everyday experience that being real estate um everything from language so, you know mortgage real estate these, these words suck they're not very accessible uh it is you know by and large it's very privatized and specialized and, and hard to access so our, our mission is to create financial products that you know un unlock that and make it more accessible to everyone um, a bit about us, you know, we are Texas-based, proud of it, uh, wealth tech platform. Uh, we've been backed by some amazing investors and partners, you know, some, some great folks in the Texas market in particular, being Live Oak Venture Partners, Capital Factory, you know, uh, the University of Texas at Austin as well. And uh, we've had quite a few interns come through the University of Texas, the Macomb School that... Uh... Even mm -hmm. have just created his own business and is now coming back to us uh, with his awesome. Own That's awesome. I, yeah, I, I had the opportunity to speak to the graduate class a couple of times. It's been, uh, you know, a little over a year, but we need to get back into that. Um, so a, as we look at the opportunity and you kind of frame it as a, as a problem opportunity equally, but we'd say the 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 everyday investor has what we see as, as a problem with, with options. Uh, 73% of average people um, are currently priced out of home ownership, you know, where the current market conditions are pretty extreme, uh, making that very difficult to participate in. Um, so where do you put your money? Currently, we're seeing a lot of, you know, individuals are putting their money into, into the stock market, which has experienced a lot of volatility, a good bit of risk there, um, or it's just sitting in a very much a low yield traditional bank savings account. So we believe that, you know, every investor deserves uh, more opportunity to put their money to work for them. And as we look at real estate as investment, as a company, again, our, our core focus is trying to make a very simple thought possible. And so we believe most people think about real estate investing geographically. Um, a very simple thought may be that um, from what you've heard or read, you may believe that owning um, home equity in, in, in a home in Austin is a good investment. Um, that's a very simple thought that you know we're making possible with our products here. Um, so when we look at the other side of the market, which NADA does serve two sides here, and this is on the homeowner side, uh, the homeowner has really no alternative to access equity in their home outside of taking on additional debt or, or moving out of their home. And so when you look at the total market out of the 36 trillion residential real estate market in the US, 27 trillion of that is actually homeowner equity. And, and that is uh, across the board, it's, it's, it's illiquid, it's inaccessible, um, you know, it's just sitting there stagnant. Breaking it down to the average family, you know, the average family in the most recent survey has, has uh, you know, nearly $300,000 in home equity, part of their wealth that's trapped in this illiquid um, you know, uh, asset. So it's over 2X the amount in savings and retirement combined. And just to kind of zoom out and say, if you look at this from a total opportunity, nearly 50% of, of homeowners are considered equity rich. Um, and what that means is that the equity value in their home is greater than the remaining balance of their debt, their mortgage in the home. This, this is what really led us to create city funds, our product. City funds, um, you know, we, we say are, are the first index-like funds designed for a specific city's residential home equity market. Uh, each city fund is designed to be individually focused on a single city, such as Austin, Dallas, Tampa, Miami, uh, whereby we're providing exposure to the home equity market in that city to make that very simple thought of, I believe owning home equity in Austin or Miami, et cetera, may be a good idea. We're making that possible through our funds. So to double click, you know, um, really what makes a city fund different? It is first and foremost that it is index and thematic like in design. Each fund is individual from a series LLC structure. They are not cross collateralized. Uh, so they, they focus on a single city only, in particular, a specific metro area. So uh, within that, it is that we're also singularly focused on single family residential real estate. Unlike many REITs, which are commercial real estate uh, focused, we are specifically focused on that. Um, that's part of the index thematic like nature of what we're providing exposure to. And through our SEC qualifications under the regulation A, 
um, city funds are made available to all investors, accredited or not. Uh, you can invest in these direct from the NADA app. Uh, and the starting point is just $100. So we've made it possible for someone to own home equity for as little as $100 in some of the top cities, something we're very proud of. Mm -hmm. And similar with our, our mission on, on the retail side it is liquidity. So you know another option or blocker rather to home ownership is uh, the lack of liquidity, especially in a rising rate market. You're not really looking to move uh, and try to buy something else. And so we've very much designed and focused our products to be liquid in that they are tradable via our ATS platform direct from the NADA app as well. Okay. That is that is great. And you know, just a few questions here, John. So when, when you say one city only, you said a metro area. You know, I'm sitting here in a suburb of Austin. So would the Austin City Fund potentially uh, include some cities or is it just uh, actual city line area? Uh, that's a good question. It's it's not city limit base. It is the the the, the metro area. So right. we say Austin is the MSA, and so it gives us a strategic uh, disbursement across that city. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't have it readily available, but when we publish our our monthly performance updates per city, we have a, a map that shows a drop of where we're at. So it's something that we very much monitor in terms of diversification in these sub markets mm -hmm. uh, of each MSA. And that that's great to know, you know, because sometimes the, in these hot markets, there is like so much competition over the actual center of the, that hot city market. Um, that's great to hear that hundred dollar minimum investment. You can get people started on that. Um, you know, we talked about this earlier, but if you're going to make a larger investment, um, I believe you said it's twenty five thousand dollars or above. They should yes. contact the NADA team and you can have a private discussion specifically about uh, your investment there. Um, again, liquidity, that's a great thing for our investors or any investors. Um, if you are a novice and you haven't, um, you know, this is maybe one of your first alternative investments, that's typically one of the uh, second or third or sometimes even the first question that our experienced investors ask about alternatives. Okay, these investments are not the same as stocks. Do they have some method for liquidity, um, many alternative investments. Um, some have lots of liquidity in our world. Some have close to zero liquidity. So it's always good to know and ask those questions um, before doing an alternative investment. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. That, that, was, that was a great color. So diving a little bit deeper, how does a city fund, how are we able to represent a, a city's home equity market and this goes into more where NADA operates a two-sided marketplace. And so when we're delivering a, uh, our product, a financial product to a homeowner, it's we're placing home equity investments into their home. We, we call this product home shares. Uh, the home share is, uh, again, a home equity investment whereby uh, we are investing in a fraction of their home, their, their equity position today, so where the homeowner can receive cash and then in exchange, we're, we're, we're receiving a lien secured interest in that home's future value. Uh, so as, as an asset, you know, from an investor, when you're investing in a city fund, you, you are also delivering, you know, a, a consumer good, a purposeful asset here, because you're, you're providing liquidity to homeowners, especially in the current state of market where they may be impacted by inflation, et cetera. We see a lot of our customers on this side are, are getting cash out of their home. Uh, for the purpose of paying for their kids' school, um, paying down their debt, um, you know, or, or investing into improving their home as well. Um, but again, if you look at this asset, this unique, you know, investment asset that we've pulled in these funds, these home equity investments, in, in many of these markets, you have a very limited amount of land, which is really your issue. And so Austin, we saw, for, I keep using that as an example, because we saw such a surge of people moving to that area. Uh, so that that reduced the amount of available inventory in such a high demand supply constrained market by our primary asset being these fractional home home equity investments, we're able to unlock an inventory class that hasn't been made uh, available in a fund structure like this, uh, to our knowledge, uh, ever. So, of course, an investor, you're getting access to these these you know high demand markets where inventory may otherwise be, uh, you know, be unavailable. Um, in addition, you're getting an investment into a home that is owner occupied to where the owner does retain, you know, ownership rights and responsibilities 
uh, as far as you know, maintaining the home and everything else as far as insurance, et cetera. Uh, in addition, they maintain the majority equity upside in, in the property. So for us as a manager and for anyone investing in these funds, what you gain is that we do not have to, to, to carry the burden of property management for each. They're effectively self-managed by the owners. Um, and we have an owner and an asset that is you know, inherently aligned with the interests uh, of the investors as well, because they want to see the greater equity upside of their own home as well. Um, in addition, the, these, these investments have downside protection in, in their design. When we place a home equity investment, we do so with a, uh, you know, a risk adjusted discount to the home's market value. And based on property type and a few other factors, this is 10 to 15% discounted to the current market value, the current appraised value of that home. Um, so these are these are option contracts that are secured by liens, just like a home equity loan or home equity line of credit, a very similar lien mortgage deed structure behind them. Um, but they are in effect in the money um, option contracts day one. Okay. And you know, this this access to me is great, is that in these high competitive markets, sometimes the homeowners themselves, you know, are kind of looking at the other side of this product, they're having trouble moving too, because there is no inventory. So even in a low inventory, high rate environment, when, um, you know, those homeowners cannot move, they can still kind of be participating on the other side of your marketplace. Um when a you know another investment firm you know trying to go into Miami or Austin, a really hot market, if there's only a 100 homes to buy, um, mm -hmm. many investment firms competing over them, mm -hmm. maybe local investors competing over them, local movers competing over them as well. That can be you know everyone's trying to get in on the same piece of the pie there. So this is a different angle to that really low inventory type of market. Um, you know. So Speaking about, um, you know, sometimes people think, okay, I can kind of see, you know, as the rocket dollar investor, my money is going and kind of entering into these contracts. Where would these contracts kind of get liquidity? Would that be when someone sells the home and some other situations? Yeah. So the, the typical repayment of the home share is when the homeowner sells their home mm -hmm. or they do a refinance of their primary mortgage, gotcha. uh, such as a cash out. Um, one of the things that is a bit unique about, about NADA is that we offer these home share products to homeowners through a licensed mortgage uh, brokerage originator. And so we also sell debt products, traditional mortgages. So mm -hmm. we're constantly engaged with our customer whenever the market is in a favorable position. We, we do inform them of, hey, you could get a cash out refinance to pay off this home equity investment because the, the terms are favorable for you now. Yeah. Um, in addition, the the terms uh, the, the term of the investment is a 10 year term so the payment is is due upon 10 years um, we will look at the property to see if we want to reinvest and extend uh, based on unearning criteria at that point uh, but that's you know those are your three 10 year term uh, sell of home or cash out refinance yeah and is there like an average hold time that maybe you know obviously the 10 years is the you know, if nothing changed and the contract went to its full completion, but, you know, people move, um, people do kind of change their finances and think, should they refinance? So what's, is there an average time that usually one of these home shares homeowners would hold this? That's a great question. E yeah. The, the typical lifetime of, of this uh, asset is 4.5, you know, probably creeping up to five right now. People are staying in their homes a little bit longer. Uh, so 4.5 to five years. Um, the current portfolio churn, the repayment rate that we're seeing is, 20 to 22 percent per year, which okay. equates to that number. Okay. You know, over time. And just so if you know an investor is tuning into this on our page or on YouTube later, just so you understand who we're talking about, when we're talking about a home share, this is um, you know the home equity, uh, and this would be you know in a city fund there might be many many different home shares and many many different individual owners who own this equity. So there is, you know, a small amount of turnover of these different individual owners and single family homes. Uh, you know, you could be holding that city fund for an extended period of time, or you could try and uh, use the secondary market that John was mentioning earlier. So while you might be holding the city fund, the portfolio is turning over a little bit, just as maybe an index fund does or a mutual fund uh, does rebalancing uh, to enter new investments. 
Yeah, that's that's great to add. You know, another thing that is maybe a bit more familiar, but uh, I think I need to make sure I share it, that each city fund is, is structured as a REIT. And so we do have an asset mix of some single family rentals um, up front, but uh, the vast majority of units are in the home equity investments. Okay. That, that, that does have a bit of a lumpy, if you will, cash flow element of it. But as it matures, the cash flow and distributions of the city fund will be, you know, uh, you know, a sizable component of the fund as well. But your majority is is the massive equity build up opportunity, and the liquidity option that we've made available through secondary. Great, and uh, I won't get into it all in this webinar. It's kind of a complex topic, but as uh, our novice investors in real estate and self directed IRAs turn into experienced investors, they usually hear about something called UBIT tax. Uh, unrealized business income tax. It becomes really scary because it can hit uh, certain real estate investments. Um, just know if you're in a REIT, you as the investor are shielded from that UBIT tax. So a REIT is a great potential um, uh, structure for real estate investment in a self-directed IRA. It kind of eliminates that uh, headache or worry that you might have to think about UBIT tax. And that can hit some of um, you know our more much more hands-on investors who go out and go find leverage to do their own properties in a self-directed IRA, they can get into UBIT tax and then they have to talk to a CPA. So long story short, with NADA and the city funds being organized as a REIT, you do not have to be visiting a CPA and kind of working out complex calculations on that after you've entered or a few years into the investment. Perfect. So to bring it back in, NADA does serve two sides of the market. We have our, you know, our, our real estate investment products, a family of, of funds, city funds, where you know we're, we're making it accessible to own equity in a city for as little as $100. And then on the other side, we have this home share product for homeowners. Um, there's zero monthly payments to that. Owners retain 100% ownership. Um, and they're able to get money out very fast. Someone that might be familiar to a home equity line of credit, you know, a HELOC or, or, or HELON, uh, th these have very long cycles and, and very rigid qualification standards. So we're able to get cash out quick. Um, and then tying that back into the value to the, the investor in, in a city fund by, by home shares being your primary asset, that gives us a really quality customer that's coming in because of the uniqueness of what we can offer. And it gives a really quality asset uh, to, to the fund as well. Great. And so with your rocket dollar account, if you're a rocket dollar investor, you are going to be looking at the city funds offering because you know, that's what your self-directed IRA investing, uh, that's what you're looking to do. If you're interested in the home shares product, that's fine for your personal or your own family situation with your own home. If you're in a, a, an applicable market, the one big caveat that I would say is even though you might be a small part of the city fund, if you do invest, uh, if you do um, talk to Nada about being in home shares, um, you know, and that uh, home equity um, arrangement, I would skip investing in your city's uh, city fund. And that's just because there are prohibited transaction rules that talk about uh, undue benefit and kind of mixing between uh, your IRA and uh, your personal situation. So even though there's a 10% rule, you know, that you're probably going to be under, just best to probably stay away from it. If you're excited about kind of both sides of the marketplace, stick to investing into the other city funds mm -hmm. outside of your current location. And um, just generally, thank you, John, for going through both sides of this marketplace. I always think that's really important to understand. Even if you are not at all interested in home shares, if you are a really interested in city funds, just understanding what's driving your investment, what's driving the other side of the marketplace. You can put yourself in that person's shoes maybe a little bit, and that'll help you kind of understand what's driving the investment performance um, and how that fund performs. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it, just to quickly riff on that, you know, one of the, the market examples that we really modeled the home share after the concept is that like, again, I would say the average homeowner has Two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars in home equity, and so similar to how you you, you guys, Rocket Dollar, you've made it possible to where an IRA account, which is you typically you know typically trapped out of the ability to direct and kind of control your money, uh, home share to home equity does something very similar. It allows someone to take that money out 
and make an investment elsewhere, uh, you know, really into anything, whether it be themselves, the family, school, et cetera. Uh, but it, it's similar uh, in thesis and that like someone should have more control of their own money. Um, so great thing to add. We have seen quite a bit of, of home share customers participate in the other cities, you know, maybe a bit of an arbitrage even for them as they look at that, you know, but it, it, it's all around uh, optionality with uh, these financial products. Yeah. And if you did want to invest in your own city fund, you could do it. Just don't do it. Uh, if you've done home shares, just don't do it through your rocket dollar IRA. So it's fine to do home shares and it's fine to do the Austin city fund and be in both as long as it's not both in your IRA. Whenever you have an IRA investment, just think you want to keep it fully clean, almost like it's a separate person. Um, like it's a, a sibling or a brother, you're helping them invest, but you know you don't like to mix 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 things that would mess things up. Um, that's the easiest way to stay clear of the prohibited transaction rules. Uh, if you ever have a question about that, you can look at our knowledge base or call our sales line. We'll be happy to help you understand that. All right, John, let, let, uh, let's see where the city funds are today. Yeah, perfect. So th today we have four active city funds. Um, we've been in the capital raising mode primarily on, on these four, uh, Dallas, Austin, Miami, and Tampa. Um, we, we've been deploying capital now for five, five and a half months. And uh, as of the most recent update of the net asset values per fund, I'm very happy to share that each fund has shown an appreciation of, of net asset value. Uh, so breaking that down to a per share gain is where you see these numbers here. You know, Dallas is 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 nine, Austin seventeen, uh, Miami twelve, and, and Tampa fourteen. Um, total growth across the family uh, of city funds has grown um, over one hundred and sixty percent over the past few months. So we're now uh, actually we're now just over four point two million in AUM. Uh, with you know well over four thousand retail investors that have uh, participated in this uh, in in these products with us. Great. And how generally how long from uh, maybe capital coming in does that take before it's deployed to like a home equity uh, arrangement? Actually, like boots on the ground, the money is now being delivered um, and exchanged for those home equity contracts. It it is very fast today. Uh, we we don't really we don't like money sitting idle on a bank account that's coming in. So um, we have great partners uh, with North Capital, uh, being that in in doing very efficient rolling closes. Mm -hmm. So the way that we're making investments in these markets is is not a places the investment uh, as they're coming in. So we have a basically like a sales productivity line that we're putting on a warehouse line. And so we'll warehouse it. And then as the, each fund has enough equity cash cleared out of a rolling close, we already have an asset ready to place into it in advance. Okay. So that way we're not trying to, we, you know, there's not too much delay. We're, we're, yeah. we're pretty efficient and in the movement. There. From my understanding is, you know, you don't want the capital to sit too long, but you also don't want it to just shove it into literally any homeowner that ever came up. Right. You want to make sure right. that there's a process in place that as capital comes in, it's being um, you know, talked to with these homeowners that are looking to uh, exchange equity in their home. So once that process is kind of complete, then uh, you know, cash being given to NADA and city funds can be deployed to the actual homeowners to deploy the fund. Yeah, it's correct. I mean, maybe I can clarify one, one, one other thing to your point is that we're always assessing and making investments at a steady rate here. Mm -hmm. NADA has a warehouse line in, in balance sheet in which we could finance and fund the homeowner in advance of a city fund buying it mm -hmm. uh, so that we're always able to, to really select that really quality asset and that trying to, to, to keep that match and go, go find something quickly. Yeah. Um, Finding the best matches are obviously important. And that's NADA's job, just kind of making sure the capital is continuously flowing. So you're picking high quality matches. Yep. Perfect. So, if you look at the unit mix, the, the asset type mix, we currently have seven active held single family rentals across the funds and 44 home shares. Okay. Uh, in and, the short amount of time. Oh, go ahead, Brendan. Yeah. And I think we mentioned this before, but these are pretty much all single family uh, homes that you're investing in across these marketplaces. So you're That's really right. trying to get a whole almost index of 
all of these individual homes in these cities. So, you know, it's not multifamily or commercial like some other REITs are. Um, and fr from, I mean, I experience, I'm, I've talked with so many different single family home um, owners, investors, and property managers. That's a very involved business, just so you know. If, you, if, if you've done it, you're, you're hearing this, you already know that it's very involved. There's only so many properties that one individual can invest in. And if they're, someone's investing with their IRA, they also have to pay property management for every single property mm -hmm. that they add to their IRA. And that can get very expensive. It can also just administratively be a huge headache for many people to manage. And time is money. So, um, you know, think of these cities funds as getting exposure. Um, and also think, you know, when someone says, why would I do this? I often say back to the client, like, okay, well, you can go look at how much it is to manage a single family home on your own. And then inside of an IRA. In an IRA, there's some additional constraints that can make it more difficult is that you can't work on the property and you can't really be too close at all to management. You can only do some basic higher level managerial things. You have to stay hands off for everything else. So this is a really awesome product uh, with the, the amount of exposure that you're getting uh, in these funds. Yeah, that's that's a great, great ad. Diversification is is key. And so to to, to just speak to that on, on the home share units, our average investment through home shares is is around forty to fifty thousand dollars per home. And so as we as we start a new fund, Tampa being our newest today, we are able to reach a pretty diverse uh, representation of a single market very quickly, you know, which again kind of de-risk if, if you're not as familiar or savvy with investing in real estate, you may just be going into a single property. In this case, it is a diversified pool that really represents uh, the different sub-markets within that, that greater metro. Um, that's something that we spend a lot of time on with our investor team to be strategic in, in our investments. Right. Okay, so what's what's next? For us, we have um, you know a lot of plans with new cities. We have planned and already SEC qualified uh, these additional five, uh, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Nashville, LA, and, and Denver. Um, you know, when we look at a city to plant a city fund in, um, we, we look at, uh, obviously, the, the, the home price appreciation historical there, uh, as well as some models that are looking forward. And we really focus on the, on the inventory as well. Um, you know, I'll use Phoenix as an example. Phoenix is a, a city that has quite a bit of PUDs, plan unit developments. Um, you know, so there's a lot of uh, standardized housing that has fairly uh, confident predictability in terms of long-term appreciation, performance, et cetera. It, it makes it more... Uh, more fitting to an index like market to where, you know, we, we may look at a market like, for example, San Francisco, it's, it's a very nice city, very, very marketable in that way, but the inventory there is very unique and, and nuanced and, and not really that easy to build an index like. So we wouldn't consider San Francisco for a city fund product, you know, at least not today uh, because of that. So, so these are some of the ways that we look at that. You know, these markets are markets that we're very, very big on that we think are doing uh, some good things. Some are, you know, in a rebound, some are still in a, in a heavy growth. Um, so, so these will be coming out over the next, uh, you know, few months throughout the, the remaining year. All right, great. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a really common for our investors. You know, there's two types. There's ones that love investing in their backyard because they're already very familiar with a specific city. They might live there or, 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 you know, less than a couple hours away. They visit there often. And there's others that, you know, they want to kind of extend their borders, so to speak, of they might already have an investment in their backyard um, or they might already be overly exposed to it. Maybe they live there. So that's, you know, kind of their exposure. They think about their whole portfolio. You know, like I have a lot already kind of in Austin and Central Texas. So mm -hmm. um, so many of our investors say, look, I'm in the East Coast or the corner of the country. There's no way I'm going to be able to smartly manage Phoenix in my own real estate portfolio. So this is a way to get exposure to that as that kind of long distance investor. Yeah, well said. Another thing that's that's key to us, really everything that we do and how we build and operate is, is in the public 
So with our funds, it's no different. Our, our, our product and, and technology team has designed, you know, I think an amazing app, something I'm very proud of for investors to experience the city funds product. Uh, so our, our app is, is available for download in, in the Apple iOS or, or Android store uh, today for anyone that wants to experience this. We, we, we display our city funds and we, we track HPI, which is the, the, the home price index. This is provided by a third party uh, a data provider, House Canary, that extracts and builds index. You know, it's quite a few. Zillow does one. Uh, and they're all kind of similar. So that way you can, we provide our investors with visibility into that city's housing performance. And then we allow them to see that relative to the, the fund's performance as well, which is always our benchmark is to, to, to you know, stay, stay ahead of that. Um, so anyone can go in and view a city, get right down into the city's activity. They can, if you look at the track fund performance, we have a, a real-time notification uh, system built into the app. So, if, for example, if a single family rental property has a tenant placed in it, our investor team will update that on their end and it'll push a notification out. So someone always knows what's the pulse. If we were to make a new investment in a home share, it is the same thing. So everyone can see what's going on. And similar to like an ETF like view, if someone's seen that, it's how we designed our, our holdings or portfolio assets. Uh, so you'll see on the, on the third screen here, 22 units. Um, I believe this is the current mix of the Austin fund. Uh, we have three rentals and 19 home shares. Uh, any investor can click view all and view into the property level details to see when we acquired it. How does that individual asset performing since acquisition? What's the appreciation rate, et cetera. And we're constantly listening to our, to our investors and, and adding more uh, transparency and engagement to that end as well. Um, we have, estimated share values that we are publishing so everyone can see what their share value is relative to what they bought it at. And we just released the recurring investment feature, which we are excited about. And we've seen a lot of people participate in as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're going to get started with your Rocket Dollar account, first you could go to rocketdollar.com and then we have a partners page. You will start your Rocket Dollar IRA first because first we need your IRA to exist and then we can help you uh, get the money to the city funds experience. So we have uh, an intake form on the Rocket Dollars Partners page right now. You know, it's low tech right now, but we're going to keep working with John's team um, to make sure we can get that experience to be smoother and smoother. So right now we're supporting the IRA LLC um, products and our solo 401k that can invest into city funds. Um, stay tuned. We're going to keep talking with John's team throughout the year, see how we can improve that process and make it easier for you to use an IRA to invest uh, into city funds. Yeah, it's perfect. We, so something that NADA does as well for everyone that signs up is we have, you know, every two weeks we do an onboarding webinar with our new investors, uh, whether they've invested or not, just someone that signed up to make sure we're, we're, we're available to them to talk about the process. And so we'll continue to engage uh, the same way with Brendan's team. If any of you have questions as we have those sessions as well, uh, and just really focus on continuing to improve this, this process and experience for, for everyone. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things alternative investments have lacked and that has intimidated people entering them is the lack of data. So John, I love all the data that you just talked about, data feeds, um, whether it's Zillow or other real estate um, data platforms. Um, I'm sure you know, the amount of improvement in just the last 10 years in real estate data that is now hitting the web um, is astronomical. And, you know, there was a little bit of it in the early 2000s, but it's just not nearly as rich as it was today. So, you know, part of Rocket Dollar, it's something we always want to work on whenever we have time is how can we increase the amount of data or statements or real time updates for these investments? Because a lot of the traditional alternative investment experience is you invest and you maybe get an email, but you get a statement maybe once or twice a year. So mm -hmm. having this real-time data and having a lot more um, hands-on kind of check-ins just throughout the year is really helpful to uh, an alternatives investor. Yeah, it, it's it's very helpful for me frame something that I definitely should have leaned into. So we do definitive monthly performance updates. We we expand on how many investments have we made. Uh, we have drop pins of maps 
to where everyone can see throughout that metro, if it's Austin, Miami, et cetera, you know, what's dispersed, what's happened, what's going on. And then intra month, like throughout the month is where we'll have, you know, you know, we're, we're typically making three to four investments on uh, in, in, in any given week. Uh, and so you're going to get that information as well. Um, we're very much in, you know, an engaged group. We love to hear from our investors. Um, we have some, we have a whole merch store where people have really taken to the city funds merch. It's, uh, you know, I own Dallas, I own Miami, kind of these provocative shirts that people really like and some sweaters and everything. So, you know, we, we like to engage our community and then help everyone to be, uh, you know, an active participant and advocate and, and hold us accountable to making this process better and consistently transparent. Great. Great to hear that growth. Okay. You can go to the next one if you're ready. Yeah. So a question that we get asked a lot is, you know, when is secondary coming? Uh, when will I be able to trade my shares? Um, really, we, we have the business relationship and the technology integration with uh, North Capital, also a company, and, and PPEX is the name of this alternative trading system that we built it upon. Our plan is to have secondary listing in Q3, um, and this is really based on where we believe the funds that have been active in investing in, in uh, real estate for some time will reach a mature point to where the current shareholders will have a real interest in listing their shares to be sold on the secondary. Um, so our, our current intent is to get secondary live and app and available by Q3 for the first four funds that we previously mentioned. That's Austin, Dallas, Miami, and Tampa. Um, after we do the initial listing of secondary in the app, um, that experience will be the same if, unless some, as someone buying primary. If someone is to join the app, during a secondary trade window and they wanted to invest in Austin, the only way to do so would be through secondary. So that'd mean that a, an investor that currently held shares in that fund would be willing to sell their shares is how someone new would buy in. Um, this, this process after the initial will be a recurring uh, window. It's where we offer, currently we're, we're, we're planning for one day out of every week to have secondary um, and then go back on primary the rest of the days. Because each of the city funds is, is an evergreen fund, and that means that they're they're always raising new capital. Uh, but we do want to make sure we have clear secondary windows for our, our current shareholders. Right. And just so everyone understands, you know, I think some people, um, you know, some of our crypto investors, you know, they're very used to, they can point and click and almost get instant liquidity for most, not all crypto assets, but most of them instantly. So sometimes when we have a, a heavy stock investor or every crypto investor come over and they're trying to go into real estate and other assets, they go, why is it so hard to get secondary trading? And just appreciate, you know, I guess there's one, there has to be two sides of the market. So there has to be someone to buy it. Uh, also, there has to be someone that knows about it, some interface that maybe, you know, is a little bit more advanced than just uh, calling and say, hey, John, who can buy my fund? So, you know, something like a specific day where everyone trades or limited hours, um, some of those restrictions might sound a little strange or unfamiliar, but that's to help you as a secondary mm -hmm. buyer or a secondary seller. So you're basically meeting the other side of the market because if no one's there, if no one's meeting each other, no one can buy and sell these assets. We have gotten so used to uh, the stock market, you know, the York Stock Exchange and all these exchanges and now crypto exchanges. Uh, crypto is what some people dabble in for their first alternative investment. They're just so used to clicking online, point and click, and it just sells right away. You have to appreciate there's a lot of back end work going into that. Even if it is crypto or stock, there's a lot going in and supporting that instant click buy and sell marketplace. Yeah, very well said, Brendan. Um, you know, I think. This is where really we're getting to, you know, how can you access city funds with us? Um, we, we have an app that's made available in the App Store, the Google Play Store today. Uh, we are consistently publishing updates to the app based on, uh, you know, user feedback that, that again is critical to us. Uh, but today you can, you can download the app and you can browse the four active funds and in you know, just a couple of clicks, you can make your first investment. All right, and uh, John, I'm gonna take over screen sharing real quick. Okay. Um, so, just one second. 
All right. So, uh, you know, here is Rocket Dollar's partners page. It's rocketdollar.com slash partners. Uh, you can find that up in our resources tab up here if you go to uh, our homepage here. Um, so resources and um, sorry, accounts, and then browse our partners right here and you'll get to our partners page. You'll see our partners here and you can search for NADA as well. Uh, access that, and then you can see uh, part of our instructions uh, to enter that with your Rocket Dollar account. Um, also, if you'd like a few bucks off your account signup, please use the code uh, NADA to get a few dollars off um, as appreciation for you joining the audience. And we're going to send a special one to uh, John that his team will be even better one that you can get internally if you ask John's team or through their communications. Um, John, if people want to get in touch with NADA uh, outside the app and they'd like to talk directly to your team, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, we have multiple ways, but you know, on our website and in our app, we have a very active chat feature. So uh, there is a team many that always engage. They can contact us at investing at nada.co. Um, we have an active Discord channel where a lot of people are, if you're familiar, if, for those that are familiar with that channel, uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a very active channel as well. Great. Yeah. And investing at nada.co is where a rocket dollar investor, um, if you're, you can, we have a form on the rocket dollars partners page. And again, we're going to keep working on making that uh, even more streamlined. Um, but we wanted to make sure people could, uh, access this opportunity. Um, so we're happy to get that out the door here. Um, yeah. John, thank you so much for coming. Just any closing comments uh, for the YouTube and uh, website listeners here today? Uh, thank you for having me. I, you know, to anyone watching this, uh, I applaud you for taking more control of your assets, and uh, I would love to have the opportunity to meet with you and, and learn how we can make the experience and, and and everything better for you as well. Great. All right. So everyone, um, thank you for watching today. Um, please check out Nana on the Rocket Dollars Partners page. Um, if you have any Rocket Dollar IRA specific questions, please email info at Rocket Dollar. Don't send like Roth IRA questions to John's team. Uh, that's our job to answer those for you. Uh, make sure you can understand the self-directed IRA. Once you got your self-directed IRA set up in a week or two, a uh, couple weeks, we'll uh, send you back to Nada um, where you can start your investment. All right. Thanks so much, John. Thank you.